right guys, so I am back and I had a little bit of problem with the video. I have shot this once already and the video file, I was getting ready to put it together in my editing program and the video has disappeared. So as you saw in the first clip, you saw the MTM PF22 stop producing any foam. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to completely take this apart and check it and determine what the problem is. I already know what the problem is because I've done it um, once before, but I'm gonna show you what it is now. So the very first thing you wanna do is let's take the bottle off, okay? Now make sure that this straw right here, this pickup tube, is firmly seated on the nipple right there, okay? That has to be nice and tight. There is a small air vent hose, uh, I'm sorry, a small air vent hole that's right here. Make sure that is completely uh, clear. It should, you should be able to see light when you're looking through it to the outside here. Step one, remove the pressure washer fitting. I've already loosened this to save time. Okay. And obviously, if you look down inside there, you're going to see the orifice and you just take a flat bladed screwdriver remove it like that all right so there's the orifice i don't know what number this is but you should be able to see right through it if you can't take a paper clip and uh, run it through there you can also run it through some hot water when the orifice is removed, look down inside there to make sure there are no uh, debris or corrosion in there. Next to what we want to do is we want to remove the, the front assembly right here. So you're going to see a, a pin, a roll pin right here. It goes all the way through and you're going to be able to probably, there's probably a little bit sticking up like this. So you're just going to get a pick and I'm going to stick the pick in there. Let me see if I can do this with the... Take a dead blow hammer. Start knocking that out. Be very careful because this part is plastic. You just want to hit on the uh, pen itself. Now, as it starts to come up right here, you're going to be able to take some needle nose pliers. Now, let me get it up just a little further. Okay, so now it's sticking up maybe about a almost an inch. Just grab it with some needle nose pliers. And there's your roll pin right there. So at this point, you can slide this nozzle assembly off. Now inside the nozzle assembly, you need to make sure that this cone, this plastic cone and this O-ring is here. That fits like this inside the uh, PF22 body. So obviously make sure that the uh, hole is clear and the nozzle just like look straight down it and you can um, also look in here a little bit now there is a there's a uh, strainer that's in there it's almost like a piece of wire mesh if you want to uh, inspect that you can and that's that right there is not going to cause the MTM to not draw I will show you what will in a minute now you're gonna notice on the body here, make sure this O-ring is in good shape and intact. Look directly through the hole and you should be able to see daylight in there, okay? And obviously look directly through there and you can see all the way to the other side. Now this final part, there is a Allen head bolt right here. It's a three millimeter, so just take a you can use an Allen key or a socket like I've got. It should not be tight at all. 
should just be snug. I want to remove that. Okay. So you've got your Allen head bolt. And then this will pop right up like this. And you're going to see the, I'm going to call this the foam distribution or thickness valve. It has a, a little bit of a travel up and down. What you want to do is you want to go all the way in clockwise until it seats. And you're going to see a clip. This is the hardest part of the whole procedure. There is a 270 degree clip like a little sir clip that goes along in there. So you can do this with a with your pick. Now you see it start to come up, right? So make sure as it's starting to come up like that, you kind of put your finger on this side because you don't want this thing shooting across the room. And I'm just going to take a flat bladed screwdriver and work it out like that. Okay, and there is a picture of the clip. Set that aside. Now at this point, you can take this foam thickness valve and screw it all the way out, all right? And you're gonna notice there's a small O-ring right here. Okay, make sure that's in good shape. You're gonna see some, this is made of brass, so you're going to see a little bit of probably greenish um, corrosion. It's just a little, it's what happens to brass. Just make sure it's not very thick. Make sure the threads here are, don't have any buildup on them. Set that aside. Now, you can look directly in this hole right here. So I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up, but in the original video that I shot, there was a piece of debris in that hole right there. And you can take a paper clip and just make it long, about a couple inches long, and stick through there. What actually was in there was a tiny little piece of that Rain-X uh, wash and wax. It had those little pearls in it. And that was, <laughs> that was what was causing it. It hadn't dissolved all the way. Uh, if there's anything in your soap any of these little pearls or beads or anything, do not put it in a foam cannon. And on a video I just shot, we're doing uh, on the hybrid wash series, I used it again in the Adams MTM foam cannon and it clogged that one up too. So I'm gonna have to basically do the same thing. Now this plastic piece right here, okay, there's a little tab. You don't have to remove this. All right, this is not necessary to remove. So just uh, if you want to just blow in there, make sure. But you should be able to you should be able to uh, see directly through there. You should be able to see that way, that way, and that way. So everything's clear. Okay. So to put this back, it's just the reverse order. You're going to take the distribution foam thickness valve and you're going to screw it all the way in till it bottoms. Now this is the hardest part of this whole procedure uh, is getting this clip back in here. So the best way to do that is just take the clip and slide it over like this. You're going to get one end of the clip down in there so it's sticking up a little bit like this. Then I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and I'm going to compress the, I'm going to compress it. And the hard part of this is that it's good to have a, a third hand if you have it. Now the other way that you can do this if you're having trouble, um, you can walk the clip in. I'm going to try to do that without stabbing my hand. Um, I'm sorry, my thumb's probably getting in the way of this, but this clip has a lot of tension on it. So it is, okay, there we go. So what I did was I got the one end of it down in there and this end was sticking up and I had my thumb on this side and I just pressed it 
and then it dropped right down in there. So now this will not, this valve will not come out. That's what holds it in there. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is, I'm gonna do this in a little bit different order and I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put our orifice back in here. When it bottoms, just snug it down. It doesn't need to be gorilla tight. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take our cone, make sure that you have the O-ring on it and just slide it in the tube like this. Make sure the O-ring is seated like this all the way around. Don't get it to where it's down in there. It's supposed to be on top, okay? Now, you're gonna notice a little half ball right here. That is going to line up with one of these holes. It doesn't matter which one, okay? It just has to line up with one of them. So as you put this on, make sure both O-rings are on there and just slide it on, okay? And as it's, just line it up. So basically you're lining it up so that there's no gap. If you had it not lined up like this, there's gonna be a big gap but just make sure, again, that that ball's right there. Now, put it in your hand like this and squeeze it down. Take the roll pin, all right, and there sh you should be able to see the top of the roll pin, and stick that in one of the holes like this, all right. Now I've got pressure. I'm squeezing this together. Take your hammer and very gently tap it in just like that. All right. Now, once it's this far in, it's already locked this mechanism to the body, so it's not going to go anywhere. So just very, very gently, okay? And this doesn't have to be in all the way, all right? It's not necessary to be in all the way. If you want to do it, then I'm going to, let me see if I can do this off camera a little bit. Okay, you can put it in a little bit further like that. Just be very careful, right? because this is plastic, but it's going nowhere, all right? Now, the reason that I put this roll pin in here first before the, this knob is because the knob is pretty big and it's easier to hammer on this when this, is, this knob is off. So this is obviously a square and it looks like the hole is round, but it has uh, little grooves inside there which will mate up. And it doesn't matter where, which way the knob goes, just kind of gently put it on there till it seats like that. Take the Allen bolt, put it on there like that. Oops, we'll just hand tighten this. Now you don't have to have a socket, you can use an Allen, an L wrench. Okay, and once it gets there like that, we're going to just snug it up. That's it. That's all you want. Because remember that this is plastic and you can crack this. Okay, so you should have full travel now. That's all the way. Plus is all the thickest foam and that is the uh, thinnest foam. And basically this is just, I believe it's uh, letting uh, a measure of air in there, which increases it. All right, so the next step you want to do is you want to take your pressure washer fitting, quick connect, and it's probably going to be a 9 16 Okay, once that's on there, place your pickup tube right here, and then back on the bottle like this, and you're done. That's all there is to it. So don't let this intimidate you. It's very, very easy to, to get at if, you're, if there's a clog. I don't recommend that you soak this. You see some people soaking this in vinegar. Vinegar is an acid. The only time I would probably do that is if the corrosion, if that green corrosion were really, really bad, you could soak those pieces in distilled vinegar. 
but if you will use a small paper clip, just open it up and, and if there's anything in the holes, then you'll be just fine. So hopefully guys, uh, hopefully this video won't disappear. I'm gonna upload it right now. And if you've got a different kind of foam cannon, it's gonna be a little bit different, but this is the basic kind of layout of a foam cannon. You're gonna, you're gonna still have an orifice valve and things like that. So I may, uh, if you guys wanna see it, I may take the Adams one apart, but I don't, I don't wanna delay this uh, anymore. So anyway, guys, that's it. And I appreciate you watching the video. And the next clip you're gonna see is the test of this after I. All right, so here we are back with our MTM submachine gun style PF-22 foam cannon, foam, really, foam cannon. And we're gonna see if the teardown that I did, that I just showed, fix the problem. So let's see if this foams. Yes, I would say that that is a winner. All right, so obviously, can you guys tell which foam this is? What is my favorite car soap? Adams Original Red Car Soap. So that's what that is. Now the PF22 can teach us a couple of lessons. Let me get the bottle that's in question here. So this was the culprit right here. This is the Rain-X High Foaming Wash and Wax with Carnuba, bead, Carnuba Wax Beads. And these little tiny, I'm gonna call them like tiny Tide Pod wannabes. They have, they have a little bit of wax in them and they're supposed to dissolve. Well, I, I really don't think it's a good idea to put anything with beads in it like this in your foam gun because not only did it clog up our PF-22, but yesterday, as I was doing the Hybrid Wash Triple Series, it clogged up the Adams foam gun. And now I've got to take that one apart and I'm sure it's one of these little pellets. So needless to say, if you guys are watching the Hybrid Wash Series Triple Play, you will know that this was number one in the rotation and it's now out. It's empty anyway, but it's, yeah. Anything that's got these little type of, um, I'm gonna call them solids in there. I will not use it in the foam gun because of what we experienced here. That's the only time the PF-22 has ever failed or the Adams foam cannon. It's not the foam cannon's fault. It's the operator's fault. But now I get to make the mistake so you don't have to. So anyway, guys, that's it for this video. The PF-22 is very easy to rebuild. It's very easy to take apart and clean. Just watch the video and uh, step by step and you can do it yourself. With that being said, I will see you guys on the next video.